What is going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about what I think is one of the most important skills to learn if you're a software engineer just entering the industry. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you a technique that I've been using for the past eight years on how to get better at this. So what is this skill? Well, drum roll. So the skill is learning how to read other people's code. So there's multiple reasons why this is important. There's some fairly obvious ones. And perhaps the most obvious is that if you're just starting out and you want to build new features or add new functionality to a product that already exists, you need to read other people's code and understand how the existing product works in order to add more functions on top of it. So you can't just blindly start making changes to code without understanding at the fundamental level how the code is structured and how the code works. So that's the most obvious reason of why you need to learn to read other people's code. And the second reason, which I think is perhaps the most important one, is that in order to become a better coder, to be a better engineer, we need to read other people's code to figure out what's good and what's bad, right? What do we like and what do we not like? What's easy to read, what's hard to read, what's intuitive, what's not intuitive. And the only way that you get better at doing this is by reading a lot of other people's code and making mental notes to yourself. Oh, this is really clear. This makes a lot of sense. I really like how they're doing this. Or, oh, this doesn't make a lot of sense. Why are they doing this a certain way? It, it's so unclear. Now, at certain times in your career, you'll be reading other people's code and you'll be like, what is this person trying to do? And other times it'll just click right away. Now, those are important lessons, right? Because at those points, at those junctures in your career, you're figuring out, oh, this is really good quality, high quality code. This makes a lot of sense. And sometimes this is a little bit subjective. Uh, it comes down to how people name variables, how people structure things. But an easy way or an easy technique on how to get better at this is to find some code that you think works really well. And it can work well for a variety of reasons. But regardless of the reason, take notes of those commits as lessons. And when you're faced with a new project or you're creating a new module for some application, use that as a template so that you can build on top of it and start structuring your code that way. So at least you don't need to reinvent the wheel here. You're just kind of building on top of examples you've already seen that tend to work pretty well. And the third one that I think is also important is talking to other people about code. Unfortunately, code is sometimes a little bit subjective in terms of what's good and what's bad. Uh, however, when you're talking to other people, you get a different perspective on what they think this code does well and what they think this code does poorly. So I'd encourage you to grab a friend, grab a colleague, and just start having some open discussions of what folks think is good or bad code. I promise you, you'll have some great discussions. And my final tip that I have been using for the past seven years to read code more effectively and to understand understand what's going on is to use a flowchart approach. So when you're reading code, often you're jumping around, right? There's branches and functions that bring you to 10 million different places. And sometimes it's hard to kind of backtrack and figure out where you started and how it all fits together. And in order to solve for this, I use a technique that a senior engineer seven or eight years ago showed me how to do. And it's basically you just take a visual approach. You map out your functions in a tree-like pattern and say, okay, this function calls this function and this function does this. Make notes to yourself about what it does and the return types that are being provided and just map it out in a tree-like fashion. I guarantee that if you use this visual approach to try and understand how code works, you'll have a much easier time making sense of what this code actually does and what it means. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and you can apply some of these techniques on your day-to-day -to, -day to make yourself a better coder. And as always, if you enjoyed this, please don't forget to like and subscribe down below and I'll see you next time.